This session is a is a follow up of the of the approach that you learned, right? In the in the approach, what did you learn? You learned to go from problem to solution. Now it's not enough if we simply tell you to go from problem to solution. We should also demonstrate that problem to solution actually works, right? Which is why we have for you a student project. Uh, this the, a student who who took up the challenge and you will see how she has gone from problem to solution using a very disciplined process using the spiral that you learned in the last in the in the first week right so i'm going to uh, i'm going to show you uh, the live example of a student who went from from problem to solution. Let me introduce her to you. Her name is Mugda. Mugda is from the Department of Biotechnology at IIT Madras. Uh, Mugda uh, could not be in Madras to make this presentation and she, and she very graciously told me to make this on her behalf. So let's see what Mugda has done. Uh, the, on the only request is when I'm talking about Mukda's project, try and find out if you can follow the process along with her because Mukda started her work around, we had about 13 weeks of course, she started her work around the third week and by the 12th week she had come out with a brilliant solution. Uh, the only request is not to judge the solution itself because that's not the point of showing you this project. The point of showing you this project is to help you go through the process step by step in a disciplined manner. So now, because the approach is problem to solution, what is therefore natural? The first thing you have to do is to choose a goal. Among the 17 goals, she has chosen goal number three, good health and well-being. Now, what is the logic in, in choosing the goal? Because I don't know how many times I've repeated this to you ad nauseum, but it doesn't matter. Creativity cannot happen without a problem to solve. And the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is a gift of problems, ready-made problems. Otherwise, can you imagine the amount of trouble you'll have in looking for a problem? Here, you have saved the trouble and she is saying, I want to talk about good health and well-being. Why? Because she is emotionally attached to it. The emotional attachment to good health and well-being is important. That's what we learned, right? It's always good to find out what among the 17 goals am I, am I emotionally attached to. And then in that, what, what is the next step? You have to look for information on the goal. And this is available in the UNSCG website. She looks at the targets that she selected. She also looks at the indicators. I'm not going to get into all this because it will only, uh, you know, I'm hoping that you will you will read this at leisure, you'll read this in detail, but I'm only explaining the process to you, right? So Mukda has chosen good health and well-being. These are the targets, these are the indicators. And she goes to the process. What does the process say? It says define, biologize, discover, abstract, emulate, evaluate. These are the, these are the steps she must go through. Let's find out what she does. She does define. So what is she doing? She's defining the problem in good health and well-being, which is a large umbrella, in that she's picking up a problem. So she's asking, what is the problem I wish to address? And she has very brilliantly come upon a problem statement, which is how might we decrease hospital acquired infections? Now, remember, you cannot solve the entire good health and well-being problem. What you look for is a small problem hiding in that big problem. The small problem that she wants to solve is how might we decrease hospital acquired infections. And then she's told us why it's important. It's important because, you know, lots and lots of people die and, and, and suffer from hospital acquired infections, which is, which is something that, that's affecting her and she wants to solve it. You'd also notice at the bottom, she is, uh, she's picked up some information from a, from a very reliable source, which is a good practice 
pick up as much information on the problem as possible before you try to solve it. So the defined that she wants to do is how might we decrease hospital acquired infections. That's her defined. Now comes the, 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 you know, I always get excited when I talk about biologies because it takes you to a completely different level, right? You talk about a completely different perspective. Now, normally when I say, how might we uh, prevent hospital acquired infections? What will you do? You will either look for research or infections or you will find out how other people have solved it and everything because you're trying to go towards the solution here. Here they're learning that you have to ask by the biologist is asking, how does nature accomplish what I want to address? How does nature do what I want to do? And therefore, then, of course, the, 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 tec the technical aspect of defining a problem, what is the functions in nature related to the problem? The function is protection from pathogens and coexistence with pathogens because that relates to that relates to hospital acquired infections. That's what. So therefore, what, what you really do is, is say, what is the functions that nature wants to accomplish? Are those functions similar to the functions that I want to accomplish? There is a similarity in protection from pathogens and coexisting with pathogens, right? So once you have identified that function, you actually define the problem. You, you, you biologize the problem by saying, how does nature deal with pathogens? How does nature ensure immunity? Now, how does nature do something is the, is the, is the biggest differentiator in the way biomimicry addresses problems. And then after having biologized, what does she do? She does what is discover. Discover, you already have learned in week one, is to look for organisms that accomplish the same function, that perform the same function. In this case, she has looked at two organisms, the cicada and the burying beetle. Now, you may ask, where does she get these organisms from? We will tell you about that. There is a beautiful web website called asknature.org. In asknature.org, we'll explain to you how to use asknature.org. There, you can find all the organisms that accomplish the function that Mukda wants to accomplish in her problem statement. So she's chosen the cicada and she's also looked at the function of the cicada which is very similar to protect from bacterial colonization. That means there is a connect between the cicada and the problem that she wants to solve. And there is a connect between the burying beetle and the problem that she wants to solve. The burying beetle, the function is provide immunity to protect larvae from bacteria. That's what the beetle wants to accomplish. So these are the two organisms that she wants to work with. And then now define is over, biology is over, discover is over, and then she goes to abstract. Abstract is, I know that these, or, these organisms have a particular strategy, but that strategy is very, a lot of jargon and a lot of biology in that strategy. How do I make it simple? So therefore, how do I translate the biological strategy of the beetle to a design strategy, which means how do I, how do I make it easily understandable? How do I remove all the jargon and make it a very, very simple diagrammatic representation of that strategy? So you can see that she's drawn a diagram. And um, so therefore, this is how, this is how the, 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 the cicada, uh, this is the biological strategy of cicada. And then we have translated into a design strategy. So therefore, you will notice that, that, um, that the description of the strategy is very simple. Absorption of thin and elastic cell membrane on the nano pattern, super hydrophobic surface and all that. So therefore what she's doing is she's abstracting the, 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 the biological strategy into a design strategy. So therefore define, biologize, abstract, uh, discover, abstract. Then she goes on to abstracting the biological strategy to a design strategy of the burying beetle. Same thing, right? Look at the language. It's so much easier now, right? Parent beetle actively makes and delivers molecules. So much easier to understand. But it would not have been so easier when you read the original. And that's where the skill comes in of being able to abstract something very, 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 very technical into something very, very, very simple. And then therefore, define, biologize, discover, abstract. The next one is, of course, emulate. Emulate is, emulate is where your individuality comes in, right? You suddenly go from the 
from the they, they, I will not be able to explain to you the exact process of what happens between abstract and emulate. But emulate is where you use your imagination. And suddenly, Mugda has started to think about a mask. Right? She says, according to her, the mask idea has a direct connection to the strategies that of, of the Sikara and the burying beetle. And she says that this is what I want to say. So emulate is the ideation. Emulate is where you bring out your ideas. And there's the question that she asks is, how do I apply the bio-inspired strategy to the problem I wish to address? The problem is to reduce hospital-acquired infections. And therefore, she says, if I have such a mask, it can reduce hospital-acquired infections. So what is special about the mask? She is using the strategy of the cicada and the burying beetle, and she's making a mask. And this is the description of the mask. So it's an anti antibacterial mask, outer casing, outer casing of clothing, first inner layer with rough nano pattern of cicada wings, again a strategy adopted from some cicada, second inner layer with porous hydrogen polymer loaded with active lysozymes. This is from the burying beetle strategy. And she, she actually has drawn a very nice picture of the mask, right? And this is her strategy that just, just go back to define. During define, Mukda had a problem to solve. At emulate, she has the solution simply because she went through the steps in a very inspired, in a very disciplined manner. And then, of course, I'll come back to this, but just make a note of what is there in mask. It says outer cloth casing, reusable. Think about reusable. Why should she say that? An antibacterial. So what she has got now is an idea for a mask using the biological strategy of the cicada and the burying beetle because the problem she wants to solve is to reduce hospital acquired infections. And finally, she evaluates the solution. She asks two important questions. How will I follow nature's design principle? Remember you learned it in, in week one. How will I follow nature's design principles for my solution design? So therefore, remember I said you have to, you have to think, about, think about reusable nature. You remember nature's, what do we learn in nature? nature Nature reuses, nature does not waste energy, nature, um, nature recycles everything, right? And therefore, she is she's very conscious that she must follow the design principles in her design. And she's also asking the question, what are the next steps to implement or deploy my solution? And she wants to make a prototype and, and, and make a small, at a small scale and find out if it works, do the testing and all that. And then maybe, maybe produce it at large scale, file an IP and all that. Therefore, what has Mukda done? Mukda has, has gone through the process in a disciplined way. She started with a problem and she's end up, ended up with a solution that fits in that fits in with nature's design principles. She's also used the inspiration from, from the natural world. She's found two organisms in the natural world that are solving the problem that she wants to solve. Isn't that magical? And she used the, she's, do, she's inspired by those two organisms and she's looking at the strategy that those organisms employ to come back with a, a, a solution that she's picked up from nature. And finally, she's actually following the design principles of nature. Isn't this completely inspiring, right? Now, every one of you listening to this, why we wanted to show you Mukda's work and we'll show you many other students' work is because we want you to be inspired and we want you to, um, in a way, emulate Mukda, right? Because you have the problem in front of you. You have the 17 goals. All the goals are important, critical goals. Every one of you aspires to be something big. Go back to the Ramanujan story. You're all endowed with so much of intelligence. All we are asking is to use the potential that you have. And, and there is not even too much of too much of difficult work, right? It's just a question of, of falling in love with the problem, wanting to solve that problem, come what may. As far as the solution is concerned, looking to nature for a solution, 
which is why biomimicry having the belief that nature has solved the problem that you want to solve and then going to nature and finding out from nature what are those organisms that have solved the problem you want to solve picking up the strategies of those organisms and using those strategies to come back with an idea for your problem and evaluating your idea against nature's nature's principles by which you do not you do not harm the nature anymore yeah you nature anymore can you ask can you ask for a easier way easier way to solve a problem so we are hoping that mukda's work and all the other students work that will follow is going to inspire you into 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 finding solutions of course you can ask what do we do with these solutions There are several things you can do you can like what she's saying build a prototype you can also maybe do some more research on this you can you can collaborate with with a with a with a with with the company to make what you want to make you can also file an ip if you want to you can also give your idea to a group of entrepreneurs who can take the idea further and there are several possibilities what is magical is that it is possible for every one of us it's possible for every one of us when we put our mind to it when we follow a process to go from problem to solution so i'm hoping i'm hoping that you're all running to the unscgs and looking for the problem that you want to solve